The weekend here at Gridlife Chicago in 2021 at Autobahn Country Club has been a wild one so far. Yesterday was a complete washout, rain canceling the afternoon's events, but today on Sunday we get a new lease on life for Gridlife Touring Cup and the remainder of the races we have to do this weekend. We only have an opportunity to do three of the four races that we originally planned to do. Our first one this morning, full of dramas, DJ. It all started with Tom O'Gorman and Andy Smedgar leading the way off into turn number one. It was a boaty mess for some of the drivers out there hitting some water. Jeremy Swenson had a moment, Eric Cattill and Emil Tab. We went and did some research, found out that no, they did not hit each other. They just uh, hit water at the same time and tried to avoid each other and they looked like they were going for a ride, but they got it all packed up. Yeah, basically Eric was uh, right behind Emil, couldn't actually see uh, the track. Emil drove into some water and uh, Eric followed him right into it. You'll notice that Tom O'Gorman's car is lined up fifth on the grid and this morning it was a, a mix of emotions down there in the paddock. Tom O'Gorman's car, brand new wrap, brand new livery, has won four of the last five races and uh, earlier today in race number one, the engine uh, failed on that car on the back straightaway while he was leading the race. He brought that car back to the paddock to Andy Smedgard Motorsports and they were able to swap the entire K24 engine in under two hours. This is the great thing about grid life, DJ, and the 100%. great thing about Andy Smedgard Motorsports. This is incredible. It's, I mean, in the earlier in the stream, I talked about how fast he was, but uh, I mean, everybody, everybody's getting to see it right here. But you know what? Uh, we could we could say, oh man, Andy's so fast, but it, it was a, it was an the entire team. team. It was an entire team of people, and it was people outside of ASM. There was people from everywhere just grabbing uh, pieces of wood when you it was called for. You, you were doing I had, a, hoist. I had a hammer at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this this is why Grid Life is so amazing, and why guys like Andy and the teams that he brings, and the people that that come and help out in the paddock. This is why I love Grid Life, DJ. That is the end of a weekend for anybody, even in some professional motorsports. That doesn't happen to replace an entire engine. It was the old one was literally less than two hours. Still hot in the paddock. It was still warm, like the beating heart during heart surgery, sitting on the table, still beating. It's out there, still hot, as they were putting the new one back. Yeah, I mean, you can only imagine the roller coaster of emotions that goes through Tom. You know, he he gets pole position. He's ready to race all day yesterday. It's a wash. It's a it's a rained out. He finally gets the race this morning. He's leading the race. Everything's going great. Loses an engine. He thinks his weekend's over. Back in the car, starting fifth due to his uh, one of his lap times in race one. He's still got a shot to win some races this weekend. He's still got a shot. So. What a roller coaster for Tom. <laughs> what a roller coaster for Tom and for some other drivers as well. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, race three is the one that kind of got the ax this weekend. So essentially what this means is that the race that we ran this morning set this grid by the fastest lap. Our race later today will be set by the finishing position of the drivers in this race. So the one uh, with the invert applied. With the invert, yes. Uh, so the race that we're essentially skipping is the third race of the weekend, essentially. Uh, but as we get into our second event, here again set by grid uh, by speed from the previous race that means that Tama will start fifth now uh, we don't know and we're gonna you know we're gonna keep the bar low and, and keep our hopes reasonable for if that car will actually make it through this race they only had a couple laps to test it out and see if it would run it does run but will it last will it be fast or the other questions that we're going to have uh, for Tom's uh, car? honestly just uh, just finishing the race is a win for the entire ASM crew I mean Right, right there. That's that's the spirit of GLTC. Is it, the hey, we need you back on track because uh, we're not done racing you yet. <laughs> it certainly is an amazing thing. Field is ready to go. Thumbs up from Emil Tab in the number 14 winning Formula uh, K Swap Miata. That's, we had that's cute. You could see his crew was his family yes. on the side. Of the, yeah, that's, it, it, I, I love Emil. Yeah, the ASM crew again uh, has a whole bunch of people, but Emil's team is his family, and that's another great thing. Yeah. The family atmosphere, the friends atmosphere. Emil Tab will start in sixth place. Brian Heitkotter uh, finished third in race number. I think he's going to roll off in sixth for this second race of the morning. Here's a look at Audubon Country Club. Let's have a look at the track guide for this uh, this racetrack here today. 15 corners, DJ, 2.1 miles around here. It all starts with a run down towards turn number one. Pretty short front straightaway, but take me through a lap here at Audubon. Yeah, for sure. Okay, we're so uh, we're going to follow the LED on the screen. Turn one, you kind of turn in a little early. Your momentum will carry out to the other edge of the track. You're going to grab third gear through turn three. Turn or, turn three should be flat. You're going to sneak it into fourth gear uh, for most cars into uh, then turn five. You're going to float through there. Turn six is a that first right hander is a little bit of a dummy apex. Turn seven is flat. It's basically a straightaway. Turn eight, you can sail it uh, to the edge of the track. Turn 10 is the leads onto the back straightaway. And then turn 11 kind of feels like a very, very small turn four for mid Ohio. And then you have this tricky double right. Uh, where the track gets narrow toward the exit of 14 and it leads onto the front straight.
So there is a lap at Autobahn Country Club, 2.1 miles, constructed back in 2004, so a relatively new uh, construction. This is the south course. There's also a north course and a full course that utilizes both. There's a look at Andy Smedgard. Well, we talked about him building, you know, replacing Tom's motor with his team. He also won the race earlier today. Let's not forget that. Yeah. He was telling us that while he was racing, he saw Tom pull out of the way, and he's already running through his head. You know, oh, let's get the jack stands out. Let's get it up on but, the jack. I'll be there And he's on second. the radio, too. <laughs> like, all right, this is where the tools are. Like, literally while he's racing, I, yeah. that guy's a machine. He is certainly is a machine. Also a machine, our previous champion, Eric Cattell, is going to roll off on the front row. He had a bit of a moment earlier, leaving turn number two, avoiding Emil Tab, having a moment. He slid off into the grass. The hybrid racing guys were banging out the side skirts to get them aligned and straight so they could get back on the race car. Uh, Eric Cattell's car is built for the pavement. Uh, we'll see some cars in Colorado next month that are built for the off-road, but Cattell's car definitely it's not. It's not built for the off-road, <laughs> but you know what? I, uh, I saw Eric's face when he was pulling in, and... Uh, he was still nothing but smiles, even when, even when he knew his uh, car was damaged. Uh, just because, I, I mean, let's let's face it, to be on the front of GLTC, uh, you're you're taking a hammer to your car every once in a while. <laughs> Uh, it, all, all these guys are good wrenches and, and great drivers. So, also some dramas in the, ra the first race that we actually missed was that the back half of the field uh, wasn't quite caught up as the race went green. So, uh, we're actually going to have a secondary pace lap to get everybody bunched up properly. And we have a Subaru, I think that's a, a what do they call those? Um, an SVX uh, leading that's the That's what that the, is. The, the, oh, the yeah, you can here. tell by its funky, weird window uh, configuration there. Yeah, th this is a real a cr true JDM classic. I can't, think, I can't believe that thing still runs. Uh, man, it's pretty too. And the cool thing about these cars, they had the uh, uh, the automatic seat belts. I think where they you climb in the car and it's, oh, it's over one the top. of those. And those are uh, the worst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it also has the the side windows that that barely uh, come down because the windows split into multiple pieces. Right, yeah. Uh, weather has been a lot better today than it was yesterday. Have a look at the radar. Uh, not a lot of rain on there, which is great to see. Weather is 75 degrees in the air. Track temps probably a little hotter now than it was earlier today. But the good thing is the surface is actually lightly colored. Now darker track. Uh, 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 compounds, DJ, the you know the more black yeah, that it is with the asphalt, uh, the hotter it's going to get. So this track probably isn't going to be quite as temperature sensitive as some of the other places we go, uh, but it's still going to be a little bit toasty, and there is still I think all the dampness is probably gone, but don't get off track because the water is still in the grass. Yeah, uh, the dampness is off track for the most part, but what, what's interesting with Autobahn is that the water actually will seep out of pores and cracks in the surface, so it looks completely dry out there right now. But I know for a fact in that last corner, uh, there, there's still some, uh, there's just water seeping out of the track. So you, you turn in, you have all this grip, and then uh, halfway through it, you hit like a little stream of water that's just seeping out of the surface. Now, one thing I have noticed is that in our first pace lap, Tom O'Gorman has dropped out of uh, his fifth place starting spot. Now, I can't see if he is still on course, uh, but... Uh, I, as I understand, he could also drop to the back if he feels like that's safer. He might do that. Again, untested motor. Uh, he could drop to the back, and we'll see if we can get an eyeball on that bright Tom, blue Tom's a Tom's a savage competitor. I, I, I would believe that he's probably having an issue, unfortunately. Uh, keep an eye on. Oh, he's still back there, I think, as, unless that's one of the other. There's Tom. Uh, no, that's, that's Andy. Andy. I think he's still floating around back there. We'll, we'll keep our eyes on him and make sure that he uh, comes across the timing and scoring line. Here's uh, towards the tail of the field. Uh, and not quite. I think he might have been back there somewhere, but we're going to keep our eyes out just in case uh, Tom can make it out on track. So as we make our second pace lap here, we're going to rack him up, stack him up, go double file. Uh, drivers to watch. Well, Smedgard, obviously, race winner. Eric Cattill, reigning champion. Aaron Lichty, winning his driver ever. Heitkotter, still chasing his first win in uh, the car that has the most displacement. Uh-oh, there's Tom on the pit lane uh, with the ASM crew having a look at it. I mean, you definitely don't want to lose another engine, so... If there was something slightly oh, they're, wrong. They're, they're, I think they're putting water in the radiator is what they're doing. Um, but he might get out there and Tom, still make some laps. Yeah, he can still start from the back. I, I don't know entirely what the procedure is if you don't complete a second pace lap, but I believe you can start from uh, the pits. You can start from the pits. I think that's just fine. That's kosher in the eyes of the timing and scoring crew, as, as I understand it. They got a guy going running. Uh, but, j again, th just the fact that he's out there on pit lane with an engine that runs is amazing. So uh, let's, let's sure. keep the hopes reasonable here as uh, we get set up for our green flag. All right, uh, this is an interesting lineup here. Smedgard, Cattill, and Lichty, uh, three of some of the most successful drivers we've seen in GLTC. Lichty and Cattill combined for 50-some-odd wins in the about 110 races we've completed here in GLTC. So uh, they have a whole lot of wins under their belt, but neither Lichty or Cattill have been dominant this year. Uh, you know, back at Coda, 
Coda a couple months ago. Um, Aaron Lichty brought his Porsche Cayman and crushed the field at Coda. But since then, uh, it has been uh, hit or miss for, for uh, Lichty. He's, per he's podiumed, he's performed well, but he has not won since Austin, Texas back in February. For Cattill, it's, uh, he won an event uh, back in Kentucky a couple months ago. But it's still been a while, and he's used it's to winning. It's, uh, I mean, they're about to start, but that just tell, that's not a uh, knock on Lichty. No. It's just how gr how strong the field is. Time to go racing again for our second race of the weekend, Grid Life Touring Cup from Autobahn Country Club. Green flag flies. We're racing down towards turn number one. Smedgard on the inside. On the outside, it's Cattill. He's going to back it down side by side. Behind them, that's Hyde Cotter on the outside. Lichty on the inside through turn number two. The puddle of water is mostly gone. This time, no splashes on through as Morrison runs a little bit wide. There is Hyde Cotter to the inside of Lichty with a meal tab. Going to give him a punt right to the rear bumper. Oh, that's, Give him a that's, shove. That's, uh, that's teamwork. But High Cotter, with all that torque of that V6, is still there. A little bit of a gap. We saw three wide with Joel Morrison poking his nose on Austin Hurdle. And High Cotter up the inside of Lichty. Lichty leaves some space through turn number uh, five and six now. But up front, it's Eric Cattill who's going to lead over Andy Smedgard. Strong move for the hybrid racing EG. He takes it away, but Smedgard right there behind half a car away. He's definitely right there. Eric, I know, is hungry for a win here. He hasn't had a win. Oh, big dive on the brakes for Andy Smedgard. He takes the position back, takes the race lead away through turn number seven. He slips. Cattill again side by side. Battle for the lead in GLTC. Door to door. Smedgard and Eric Cattill. Uh, what we're going to see here for the, I, what I hope is uh, for 15 minutes, we're going to see a dogfight between Andy Smedgard and Eric Cattill. That's going to be great. It is an absolute dogfight at the front. Behind him, they're still position swapping. Cattill looks on driver's left. Pulling even as they head towards the turn 11 braking zone. Smedgard goes defensive. A 40 mile an hour second gear corner is their grip on the outside. Not enough for Cadill. Now he gets back to the inside, jumps the curb, and takes the lead back through turn number 12. That, that was a, a really good pass from Eric and also Andy uh, racing him clean as uh, they're going to be heading onto the front straight here. Eric, get, that's the largest gap we've seen for first uh, uh, the entire race so far. But now Smedgard finds himself under attack from Aaron. Lichty, but long dive on the brakes from Andy Smedgard. Door to door again. Again, Smedgard has ABS. Cattill has it as well in theory. It hasn't been working very well. Jumps the curb again. Still has overlap. Here's Lichty now. Winning his driver in GLTC. Overlap flying in formation towards turn number four. Now the left-hander through the gears. And Smedgard hangs on, but it's a five-car fight up at the front. Height cutter bringing up the caboose here right now. Right, yeah, so uh, Eric exposed himself to under attack from Aaron Lichty. I think Aaron Lichty was a little nice to Eric there. Oh. You know, this is, this is such an awesome battle because we, we literally see Andy and Eric are probably running about the same lap times, but Eric's car seems to do really well in the first half of the track, and Andy seems to do really well in the first half. Well, here comes Aaron Lichty. Look up the inside of Eric Cattill. Not enough overlap to get a position there that's leaving a little bit of room for Smedgard to drive away as they negotiate through the chicane in turns eight and nine. But I don't think Smedgard's going to be able to drive away. There's two very hungry, very strong drivers. Make that three, make that four. Heidkotter's back there. He'd like right, to win, yeah, too. Do not sleep on Heidkotter. <laughs> and again, the winning formula teammates, it, it pays to have friends out there. Another bump draft shoving him down the straightaway speeds climbing north of 120 miles an hour onto the binders again down the gears and Cattill closing back in on that top spot and look who's coming Justin Kelly in sixth place in the v6 powered Scion FRS don't count him out behind him Joel Morrison and Jeremy Swenson big thundering v8 Corvette coming as well yeah Jeremy Swenson's up a couple spots uh, re really I mean, they're they're all so close they if they keep scrapping like this I mean right now Andy has a little bit of a gap so he's a uh, they're going to start running quicker lap times, maybe extend a gap, uh, you know, with that top five train following them. As we roll through turn number three now, here's a look at Heitkotter, the, the Chris Forsberg Racing uh, Nissan 370Z Nismo Asus ROG on the side as well, powering at the exit of three. Uh, that car's got a lot of grunt, but maybe not enough straightaway here to use all of it. I think this car will do really well at places like Road America, a little bit more technical places like this. It doesn't quite have the advantage it needs to power through the front four. I think I think that car excels at third gear digs because uh, it's, it's not going to have an issue putting the power down and and we'll get that nice uh, lurch. There's a couple second gear digs here, but uh, the Brian Highcotter might have issue putting power down in second gear, so all that grunt isn't an advantage if you can't put it into the ground. Look at how good uh, Andy Smedgard is on the brakes in comparison to Eric Cattill. He's getting slaughtered in the braking zones in that uh, that Civic right now, but he is still closing in. He's faster as an average over the course of the lap. Lichty and Tab have fallen off the cliff, but for the front two, it's closing now. Two car lengths as they exit the corner, and Cattill now in the slipstream behind Smedgard. Now, now let's, let's remind the audience that uh, this is Eric Cattill's first time here at the race. Track. That's true. So uh, 
you know, Andy has been here before. He has experience what it's like when it's completely dry. This is the driest the track has been the entire weekend. So there's Eric Cadil out there. He's still learning. He's still figuring out uh, how to drive the track, as as many of the drivers in the top, I mean, top 10, all, I'd say most of those drivers have never driven on this track before. It, it, again, this is a new track for a lot of competitors. It was last year as well. We have a lot of repeats, but for Cattil, he was not here. This is one of the rounds that he skipped. He went to our, uh, our upcoming event, the Alpine Horizon Festival in July. He went to that event instead of this one. This year, he's going to swap the events. He won't be at Alpine next month, but he is here right now and battling for the lead. As you mentioned, learning every single lap, and it is making him faster right now. Three tenths better than Smedgard that lap. He's right behind, tucked under the rear wing, big in the mirror of that race leader of Andy Smedgard right now. And you know, a good way to learn is to follow somebody who has the track figured out. Andy Smedgard definitely has the track figured out. This is a chess match at 100 miles an hour here, DJ. We're thinking about how we're going to make this move. Right now, Smedgard's still a bit better on the brakes. You have to make that move somewhere else. Is it a straightaway? Is it one of the sweepers? Do you put him offline by spooking him a little bit? All sorts of things that you can do as a driver to either spook your competitor or prove that, hey, I'm here, I'm ready to race. I'm up your inside, you leave me some space. I think, I think you have to start the attack a couple corners before the back straight. Uh, and then you'll have overlap in there because it, it, right now it looks like Andy's just really strong out of the left-hander that leads onto the back straight. So you almost have to start the attack uh, the couple corners before in that complex uh, just just to have Andy a little off kilter as he turns into uh, to shoot down the straightaway. Look at Brian Heikotter in the background in the Nissan 370Z. That's that black, orange, and blue car lurking in fifth place. Again, the Chris Forsberg racing car. That vehicle came together in only a couple of weeks at the beginning of the year in time to make coda uh, since that car has entered in gltc there's been some strategic mishaps and some some figuring out of the abs on these nissan 370z platforms but he has finally got it running where it should be inside the top five sitting right behind emil tab the weight difference between these cars is north of a thousand pounds between emil tab's uh, very lightweight k miata and the very heavy 370z yeah, so, I mean, that just creates a, a unique ebb and flow of racing that you'll find in Grid Life Touring Cup. You see the front five there. Uh, got a good, great look at Heikotter following uh, Emil Tab and, and Tab yesterday, or this actually this morning, had a big moment hitting the, the water and, and did a great job saving the car. We saw Chris Adams do the same thing. Big moments and hanging on. A lot of other race series, we would have crashed five cars this morning. And that was an amazing display of driving by a handful of competitors earlier. And it's only getting better uh, for all the drivers as the conditions continue to improve. But still two car lengths between the two race leaders as we negotiate the tight and twisty stuff on the far side of the racetrack. And is Cattil waiting here, or is he pushing? No, there's there's no way Eric's waiting. Uh, he the, the only reason you'd wait is if you were being hounded for uh, your second place spot. And putting Andy under the attack risks you falling back in the order. But right now, Andy and Eric, they put on a decent gap to the uh, third place driver, Aaron Lichty, behind them. And we see Aaron uh, sliding through that last turn coming uh, off the back straightaway. Behind Brian Heikotter, Justin Kelly in the Myriad Motorsports number 86, the red, black, and gray Scion FRS. He's closing into that, that pack as well. And while Tab and Heikotter are fighting, that could open the door for Kelly to sneak the nose in there. And that's what might have what we saw earlier with Cattil and Smedgard battling. That's what brought the winning formula camp together. The second you start running side by side, you kill all the speed and momentum that you were going to have. You know, two laps ago, we saw uh, Eric Cattil right on Andy's bumper. And the, the lap before the last one, he was four tenths down. And that last lap, he was two and a half tenths down. So that's that's about what seven-ish tenths looks like is that right now the gap between Andy Smedgard and Eric Cotille. And then you have another echelon of lap times behind. Third, fourth, fifth, they're all running about the same lap times. We see Heikotter on the tail of a, of Emil Tab jumping back into the mid pack here with uh, Dustin Petrie. And I believe that was Zach. Zach Lavoie in yes. the, the other ASM car, a similar livery to O'Gorman and Smedgard. But back up to the battle for third place, Aaron Lichty. This car was hot right at the beginning, but it seems like it's falling off pace just a little bit. I'd say that, but he just ran a 132.7. Uh, that was uh, quicker. Well, actually, it was the slowest of the drivers inside, uh, inside the top four. So maybe falling back into the clutches of his teammates just a little bit. Well, according to Race Hero, Tom has completed four laps. 
Uh, so that it would be news to me. He's at uh, 16th. He's on the board. Yeah, well, that, that's, that'd be pretty amazing if, if that was the case. It looks like it is. I mean, just to complete a race is impressive. We'll see if he continues to climb up as we move on here. Ten minutes in, could be expecting a white flag at any time, but right now, Smedgard is in control. He has been getting faster every single lap. There he is, Tom McGorman, out there on the racetrack. That is pretty amazing. <laughs> he's not that winning is. the race, but uh, I think he won the weekend there. somehow. He's out there, yeah, de definitely. He's, uh, he, he won the story of the weekend, that's for sure. But, I, dude, look look at Andy Smetgard's lap time from the last lap. A 31.8. That insane. is a ridiculous <laughs> lap time. That's the best lap of the weekend that we've seen so far uh, as he continues to lead, and that lead is growing comfortably. Uh, it seems like everyone else has found a little bit of room to race at the moment, which uh, gives everyone a breather and some time to kind of figure things out for later in the day. We have one more race, and we're going to invert a random number of drivers also for that event as well. So Andy Smedgard will not be starting on pole for the last race of the day, even if he wins. Right, he's definitely going to have to work his way Tom's, through. Tom's gaining spots. He just He's up in 13th now. Yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess somehow <laughs> he passed three cars that last lap. That is pretty <laughs> phenomenal. 134.072. He's a little bit off pace, but he is climbing up. Imagine if he gets a top 10 out of this. Uh, this race, I don't know how packed up they are. It's hard to tell. Maybe with this camera view as it does. Uh, sits, we'll, we'll be able to see what's in front of him. Uh, he, There's at least one car in front of him. Uh, yeah, that car, if, uh, if it, as so Gorman said, well, actually, he's not not listed as 13th. And he's, he's kind of popping around the timing a little bit, which is weird. Oh, because it's going on last lap. Uh, that's uh, I'm, not, I'm not convinced. Oh, no, it's not because there's, yeah, oh, they're, look, they're peppered in. For Tab and Lichty, a battle for third place now as the number 14 is hounding. Was uh, Emil Tab making a move on Aaron? Uh, we'll see it. We'll it, see it in the he was. Oh, he was. We must have, Aaron had kind of had a good gap on Emil. Aaron must have made a mistake that allowed Emil into that fight. Yeah, Smedgard's still down in the high 131, so he continues to pull away. Now it's a three-horse race for third place, though. Uh, Aaron Lichty, Emil Tab, and Brian Heidcott are all packed up together. Probably put two of these Miatas behind uh, the 370. They probably make about the same weight. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I Not mean. Not a little more. I think, I think the three, 370Z it's is. Like 3,000 uh, pounds? 29, 30, 31, or it's wherever the the next tire size uh, kicks in. I don't, I don't know the big boy tire sizes because uh, I don't want to drive a Civic that's that heavy. So. <laughs> well, Heikotter has been stuck behind Tab for a little bit. These cars make speed in very different ways. Uh, that car is Tiffany Kelly. She's a little slow and off pace. Going to go a lap down. Opens the door. Here comes Heikotter for fourth on Emil Tab. Drag race down the back stretch. Door to door. 370Z. That's where the power comes in. Handy. That's 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 where the power is. I bet Emil lifted just to leave Tiffany a little bit more space. But we see Emil gutsy on the brakes, but High Cotter looks like he has overlap. He's still leaving room on the left side. Yeah, to double right-hander, though, that's going to give High Cotter the advantage, and now he can use that big rear end of that car to kind of defend as they head down the straightaway. Tab will be quick in this final sector. This is where you need a lot of nimbleness in your car, but I think High Cotter's got it. He moves to fourth. Yeah, it, it'll, be a, it'll be a tall order for High Cotter at this point to go chase uh, Lichty down, so the, the top three seems to be pretty evened out, uh, you know, assuming there's no mistakes from anybody, but this, uh, those those CP parts of the track do make do make uh, a little wrench thrown into the gears where anything can happen. So it's it's not settled out in the top three. Eric Attil working by some lap traffic here on the entrance down to turn number one. Twelve and a half minutes into this race, could be over at any moment. So you got to make passes when you can. Smedgar just went quicker again, a 131.4. Wow. He is continuing to set the bar higher and higher and higher as this that's, race goes on. That's out of control. That's that is so fast. I. What's the, do you know what the time attack times look like? I because haven't, I haven't. That uh, would place really high up there with a uh, 12 and a half horsepower S2000. It, it really would, would be yeah. very, very good, wouldn't it? Uh, so as Medgar continues to lead this race, Tom O'Gorman, I have him scored 11th. If that's true, he's gained 22 spots in this race. And again, remember, he did not start where he was supposed to start as the white flag is out. So this is the final lap. It, if he gained like five spots in that last lap and ran a 33-0, he's on fire. He would be on fire. All right, white flag. Last lap for everybody out there. I think Smedgard's coming back to a checkers this time through as he comes up out of the chicane onto the back straightaway again. Uh, he's got a sizable chunk of a lead over Eric Cattill as uh, Cattill's pace has fallen off just a little bit. But for Andy Smedgard, uh, after race number one earlier this morning, he got straight out of the car, went straight to work with his team and put a motor in his teammate's car. And he got right back in the race car after doing that. Got back out on the pace laps, led the field to the green, and here he comes again as they come towards the final corner. Andy Smedgard uh, is, has had a heck of a morning, but he's going to come out of the final corner. Checkered flag is out for the number 212, and he sweeps the first two races of the day. Kyle, I need to find out what Andy eats for breakfast, man. 
He eats his Wheaties, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Second place, Eric Cattill. Third place is going to be Aaron Lichty. Fourth, Brian Heitkotter. Fifth place, Emil Tab. Then Justin Kelly, Joel Morrison. Sixth and seventh in the number 86 and 71. Jeremy Swenson in the Purple Corvette comes home eighth. Louis Chetroup in ninth. Jake Jornstad should come home in tenth. And Tom O'Gorman, uh, as he comes through, uh, as long as he has scored how I think he has scored, the timing was a little bit inconsistent, he should come through and finish 11th. All right, so if it's a top 11 invert, uh, is everybody getting their tinfoil hats on? Oh, man. I don't, I don't <laughs> think Scott would do that. I don't think he wants to create that much chaos in the world. Uh, they just pull a number out of the hat. We don't get to pick uh, what it is. We don't get to pick what it is. What is it? Uh, it's 1 through 12, or it's uh, like 4 through 12, right? Uh, uh, yeah, anywhere between there. So it could be 11. Yeah, they just it's just, they just pull a number out of a hat. We, nobody knows what it is. We won't. We won't know. Andy Smedgard wins the second race of the day. Cattell, Lichty, Heitkotter, Tab. As we look down Race Hero, I wanted to get an eye on who moved up the most. And according to Race Hero, uh, the driver that moved up the most was O'Gorman. 23 spots recorded for him if he started dead last, which I believe. Uh, Patrick Reyes down 16, so he had some issues. Oh, Luke McGrew had some issues. Yeah, Luke McGrew never started, unfortunately. He's been chasing issues all weekend. No Ryan Upham either, and no Gary Wimble to report as well that's that's a shame for uh, Luke McGrew that's that's really gonna impact uh, the season points for him uh, also for Matan Rosenberg up two spots finished 16th again the youngster his uh, only his third ever event in his Miata that's a really strong run for him Scott Robertson 14th uh, in the car that he drives to the racetrack with a little trailer for tires he comes home in 14th place uh, Myriad Motorsports Justin Kelly and Jake Jornstad both inside yeah, the very top strong 10. showings for them yeah absolutely and there's Tom McGorman finished the race and yeah. 11th place. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what a what a cool story. Man, uh, you know, racetracks are pretty cool. What do you need to do to keep that that car out of you know out of the top 15? Look, there was a there was an entire team of people working on that car, and I was just I was just kind of standing back. I'd, I'd grab a, a tool every once in a while when somebody would shout out for something. But honestly, like it was just a flurry of uh, production. Yeah, uh, that. And you you didn't want to be in the way. And this is a uh, that that's what's so cool about racetrack is. People were literally working for free and having a great time. Absolutely. There's Thomas Moss uh, off in his NB over at the back side of the course. Got time attack coming up here in just a couple minutes, but DJ to finish things off here. Great race. Andy Smedgard showing his strength again, not only in the paddock, but uh, off the racetrack as well. Uh, and as there is the hybrid racing. Oh, that's actually Matt DeRoos popping in the window there, but the hybrid racing EG going back to the scales. We're going to be with you for race number three later this afternoon uh, as we take a look. Uh, we're going to have replays here in a minute. Uh, we're going to have the Momo Moments replay reel here in just a minute. We'll, oh, I like that. We'll take a look at. That's uh, fun to say. I want to say it. The Momo Moments? Yeah. Momo Moments. Momo Ooh, Moments. I like that. Yeah, we like the ring of that, too. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Uh, so there is a look at the Momo moment of the race. Where, look oh, at the three, three wide. wide. Luke McGrew in the middle. Upham and McGrew are out there, but they went down into turn one, three abreast, and I think they this, came out the other I side. Think this, yeah, okay. And uh, as we have a look here, there were three wide at the exit of the corner. There's Hike Cotter again on the inside of Lichty. Big slide. Watch the Emil Tab give him the shot to the rear bumper. A little winning formula or a speed boost. Again, the battle for the lead between Smedgard and, and uh, Cattill went on for a handful of that was, laps. That was fire for the first couple laps. It was really, really good. And I think uh, Cattill's car uh, dropped off a little bit. I, I don't know if it dropped off or Smedgard just drove away. It was kind of a combination of the it's, two. I mean, Cattill's lap time stayed pretty consistent, and Smedgard just kept getting faster. So that, that's, that was the story there. There is Hike Cotter up the inside. That was a pass for fourth place. Got by Emil Tab. Was able to hang on on to the position over the winning formula driver. Top fives for both those drivers in both the races so far, but a, a strong run and a win for Andy Smedgard. Uh, got out of the car after winning, put a new engine in another car, got back in, won again. Won again. We'll, That's, see, uh, we'll see what rakes three holes later today.